I was driving around the, the country lines around Woolacombe last week, North Devon, and as I pulled over to let this tractor through, whatever it was, I just noticed this view, just purely by chance, through the passenger window, so I grabbed the phone, my camera, and got this one here, it's a nice view, like a farmer's track going right out into the fields, some distant hills, moody sky. So let's have a let's have a crack at this one. Probably know all the colours by now. Got ultramarine, lemon yellow, pines grey, lizard and crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber, light red. The Cutman watercolour tubes. Three brushes, large one round eight, number three rigger, three quarter inch flat. Got a collapsible water jar. Um, 15 by 11 cold press Fabriano, 130 pound paper. Tea towel drying on the top there. So uh, one more quick look at the photo and let's let's have a go at it. So before I put the sky in, just give the paper a bit of a, a bit of a soaky, not too much. I don't need too much water. Just enough to soften everything off when I put it on. Starting with a bit of just a bit of raw sienna there. And then clean the brush and I'm going to go ultramarine, a bit of Payne's Grey. And then just bash this sky in. I might put some clouds in. I'll use a tissue for that so I'll just uh, a bit more, get this in a bit darker. And I'm just going to use a tissue, clean tissue, and I'm just sort of lightening that horizon line because I thought it might be a bit too dark. So you wouldn't see the profile of the distant hill then. But something like that, and it sweeps around. And So this is a, quite an old tissue. The newer the tissue is, the cleaner it is, the more it will absorb the paper. If you want a more subtle effect, try to use the tissue that's a bit old, that's already got some paint on it and it won't absorb it so much then. And you get a more sort of subtle look like that, as opposed to the way it comes off like that, with a clean one. And keep it all random as well, don't uh, don't do all your clouds nice and even because it'll just look a bit, uh, a bit boring. So let's pop in that distant land. Let's go something like that. And the distant land, far away land, always the same colour as the sky. And what I might do is go back in with the tissue and soften that, up, soften that off a bit more. Bit sort of hazy, a bit hazy on this right hand side, so let's, let's just something like that. I've probably done too much there, but not so worry. And then as it gets closer, you can see just a bit more of the green, so just a touch of lemon yellow. And you see, it just sort of gets a little bit. A little bit greener as it comes towards us. A bit more, a bit more raw sienna, raw sienna, lemon yellow. distant trees and stuff so I'm just going to put a darker green now, sort of lemon yellow, pines grey. Distant trees and hedges and whatnot separating the fields. Just keep it sore, because at this distance you don't get many details that far away. 
Oh, the, just to give the impression of something going on there. Um, actually, while I had that colour on my brush, I could have done those. I've got some on the dry, a bit of a dry. I'm going back into those same two colours, lemon yellow, Payne's grey. And then we've got like a few little bushes there giving off. A bit of light red, only just to change the change the flavour of it as the uh, bar brush used to say. That's good enough there. And they get smaller and smaller as they go up into the distance. Clean the brush. I want to go back to a, a lighter colour. Let's say um, back to that raw sienna. And just pull that across from there. And a bit on this side. Right, now I think what I might do next is put those sort of dirty muddy tracks in. So I've cleaned the brush. Fairly dry, I don't want too much water. And it's, it's good for a sort of muddy colour, so I'm giving burnt umber, burnt umber, a bit of raw sienna, a bit of ultramarine. And then we've got these tracks that sort of. So I want it to break like that. Something like that. Again, clean the brush. And back to where uh, I don't want it too wet. Raw sienna, lemon yellow. Let's just bring this ultramarine, lemon yellow. Just changing the colours, I'm coming down. Bring it up to the edge of that track. Same on the other side. Yeah, you see, I'm just trying to vary the greens all the way through. Just keep it interesting. Just flicking. I mean, the greens predominantly sort of raw sienna, ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey. Just work your way around them. Bring this side down into the foreground. More that muddy colour, burnt umber, ultramarine, lemon yellow, just working that way. Um, now, what there is is a lot of water down here, so I might just go through. Let's put some water in, let's reflect the colours of the sky, which were sort of ultramarine. And Payne's grey. There we go, a bit of water. Just give it that sort of watery feel to it. And then on this right hand side, nice and dark. And we've got a big, big post on the right. So, really nice dark colour, easy way of getting dark, rather than just don't ever just constrain to the paint, grey, I always go burnt umber, ultramarine, and we've got a big post, it sort of comes right up to here, a bit more, a bit more blue in there. Sort of 
could be sort of three dimensional sort of thing. Put the lighter on that right hand side. I was using a card to scrape out. grasses and stuff around it. A bit of light red as well there. Ultramarine, bit of an umber, just to get it really nice and dark. A few bits of grasses look. Just get in with your fingernail. Don't get too mad. put some rocks in but I try to limit the scraping just to one element now I've done a bit of scraping on there so I don't if I put too many rocks in it it'll, it'll just look too much I might move the rocks for this one maybe a few little bits of grass there's that look in there all it needs maybe like a little little figure walking off into the distance or something. The paper's stretched so I'm just going to pull it tight so I've got a flat surface to work with. I might put a little figure in but before I do that I've got to make sure it's dry. It's dry. Switch to the uh, the rigger. Um, what should we do? A bit of bit of brown, bit of red. Um, and just a I'm just giving it a bit of blue. Actually, I'll do two of them, two people. You know what? I think it looks better when there's two, to be honest with you. Somewhat like that, and then finally, pop your signature in. I'm going to call that one finished, I think. And you, that figure just don't look right. Oh, 
I'm going to leave that before I completely ruin it. Just don't quite look right, but that's all right. Let's have a, let's have a close look at it. So this is our finished painting. Let's see how it compares to the uh, photograph. You see, um, compositionally wise, it's it's very similar. Um, probably the thing that stands out the most is if you see all the grasses, very much the same sort of green. I try to vary those greens as much as possible to keep the landscape as interesting as I can. Very simple sky. A few clouds in there. And those tissues come in very handy for creating sort of dramatic clouds and and whatnot. And putting the uh, distant land in the same colour as the sky helps push it right right into the background. Just using the corner of the eye just to create these bushes that get smaller and smaller as they go into the distance, joining our two little figures. We got this big post in the foreground. So I just popped him in and then used the uh, maybe use the car just to help create this sort of three dimensional form. And then at the base, a few scrapes with the uh, fingernail just to create some very easy way of creating grasses. If you get the paint on nice and dark, you'll get the most contrast. Obviously, you can, you can use it for the rigger if you want. And then for this sort of water in the foreground, I've just used the same colour as the sky. I suppose when you look at it, that, that could be like it looks, looks more like a shadow than water, but that's all right. So that's my little watercolour impression of a chance view I came across when I was stuck in a traffic jam on the Wollacombe country lines. I hope you like that. Thanks for watching. Keep practising. Any questions please ask and I'll see you again soon.